I still feel like, uh, am I sharing the right screen? <laughs> screen? Yes. We are oh, seeing, yeah. yes, we are seeing the split screen of, looks okay, like you've got is, notes. And, I have yeah. high level notes. Um, this is something I don't know as well. Um, actually, I, I should say I know I can understand it when I see it, but largely speaking, I'm still not convinced I ever use it anywhere. <laughs> so this is more a this is as usual with tan complaints against like Rails against metaprogramming. It's like <laughs> here are the things you can do to accommodate for users doing things. Um, and I think there's a really good metaphorical discussion on the not metaphorical like philosoph philosophical discussion on like metaprogramming and whatever, I think a little while ago. Um, I think Kai just posted, I think I meant, we, we talked about that a little while ago and it's like better for most internal packages even, or like personal use packages. Um, I still think this is more like things you would use if you were developing dplyr or dplyr adjacent things like uh, DTplyr or Polar's plier or whatever, right? Like, um, it's more, this is how the tidyverse works because we really want to support this pattern more than anything else. Um, in any case, metaprogram patterns, any, anything, we, anything before we start discussion wise? Uh, no, oh, well, I guess one important thing to point out is that uh, it's outside of the, the chapter, it's on the 30th, which is in, Three weeks. Uh, yes, this yep. this slot is getting taken over by a Q and A with Hadley, because um, this is when he was available, and it I was like, oh, that actually fits because <laughs> we'll pretty be fitting mind. for us to be there, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, um, just so everyone knows, um, I don't think I've updated the schedule, so I'll do that. Make sure that we all, yeah, it's not on there. So hopefully by that point we'll be done with meta programming. TM. Yeah, that Done. should actually be a really great place to do it. Um, because yeah, this is, it's kind of like related to like, I, I, I can't, I couldn't think of who to ask other than like this group, like, but like, you know, like I had a question on like namespaces and whatever, and like S3 method. And it's like, I actually don't know who to ask about those things other than Hadley. So I'm like, just going to throw it here, throw it on Twitter and help <laughs> either the right people discover it, because I don't know who those are, or Hadley eventually wanders along, which he actually did today, all right, ironically. Um, he also chided me. Uh, that's a good, He actually did chide me for wanting to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't see that. Oh, I can link it. Uh, I'll have to look it that up. Look, at, look it up. I put it in the, uh, yeah, it's on my feed, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, so ironically, he did actually chide me. Okay, uh, Zoom. All right, so metaprogramming patterns, like with my previous presentation method, I'm just going to have my notes and then go through this. Um, these notes aren't as detailed as I was trying to say before I got completely distracted. Um, <laughs> but these, so we're talking about these similarly to the way we talk about data mask patterns. Um, this guy, this is more of like a recipe book article for how we use diffusing, injecting, evaluating, so that users can pass in what they want. You can transform it to work with what you want it to do, generally speaking, either with tidyverse stuff or with base R things that don't work the way, you know, a forwarding pattern or whatever would work. Um, so roughly speaking, they're still the same types of patterns as in the data masking, like this, they're, compar they're pretty comparable. Forwarding, names, bridge, and transformations. Transformations is new compared to data masking because th that's the big part of um, metaprogramming that's possible. Um, so forwarding patterns, sorry, questions about that high level stuff. I should stop and check. <laughs> um, so forwarding patterns are the same. It, it, so data masking's forwarding pattern is essentially a diffuse and inject combination in one step. Um, and so theoretically speaking, we can do the exact same thing with metaprogramming, um, i.e. use enquo, uh, which is the diffuse part, and then immediately uh, inject it or delay injecting it, um, and then use end quos and triple dot or triple bang for um, injecting multiple things as like dots, like so sequential arguments. Um, so 
to me, there's a few things I picked up from this. Uh, one, endquos dot named arc auto calls as label, so you can like label the arguments that are passed in. Um, this is more useful than just passing it in like as dots, for example, because if you just passed it in as dots, um, it wouldn't have names. So you'd have to be prepared for that somehow. So you know, if you captured it first and then evaluated it, um, you could you know automatically label if the user didn't provide one uh, when you're writing a function like that. Um, but all in all, I kind of think of this as like, you know, if all we're doing is forwarding it to different spots, maybe we just want to use data mask forwarding. Um, and then the value in metaprogramming is more related to transforming things during either this two steps of diffusing and then injecting. Um, so like fixing or fixing up or hand naming user inputs, et cetera. So, all in all, forwarding exists. Um, it's more, I think it's, I think of that as like more of a technical discussion because you can do the same things as in data masking. Uh, sorry, you can do in metaprogramming, you can do the same thing in as in data masking because data masking does all of this under the hood for you. So from a technical perspective, you can do whatever masking does with metaprogramming as well. Questions on that? That's uh, my nope. takeaways. Um, <laughs> so I think, yeah, I mean, I think that kind of gets into the, okay, but where would I ever use this? It is the case where you want the user to be able to pass in X and then you turn it into Y before passing it on to whatever you're calling next. So you're kind of using what they get, they passed in, but you're maybe giving it names or you're, you know, doing something fancier that we'll be looking at. So, yeah, it, yeah. If you're straight forwarding it like directly without adding the names Correct. or whatever, I still don't necessarily see the value. I guess I, I don't think there is one thing. Yeah, I'm not sure there is one. Yeah. Um, but this is more because you can do it in data masking, you can also do it in metaprogramming. Um, it's just yeah. Easier I mean, it's for how me to explain it to people. Yeah. yeah, and it's how it's how it's how data it's how it works. works. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so names pattern, I, I had more time at the start and then I did not have <laughs> as much time. So literally my notes are, you know, <laughs> short. Uh, but we'll talk through names pattern and then go from there. So symbolize and inject. So the difference between a closure and a symbol, I don't know if this was covered in this last meeting and I didn't get time to catch up. Um, the difference between a symbol and a closure is that the symbol is just the character string essentially of portion of it. So you're, you're converting to, um, like an expression that's evaluated without a specific environment in it. Um, so it's more of a names pattern uh, that you can use when all, across all of is not supported. Um, and then there are two options. One of them is like, it goes back to data masking. So sim just translates directly. And then data sim translates to data.sil. Um, I didn't know data sim existed. I think it's useful. Yeah, um, I think I think it's relatively new. Um, because I remember it, it seemed to, to be kind of replacing some things. Um, mm -hmm. It's I'm, at I'm least new to me. To <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, uh, I actually really like, I was reading, I was streaming uh, recently, and I really liked um, Rich's reference pages in the sense that I want to know how new things are. So like, oh. he has this section at the end where it's like functions introduced here. And I really like this because it's like, oh, like I should That's expect it to be automated. Be. He's got to automate this somehow, but it's amazing, right? And then like, yeah. if you could have like a function change log, that would be so useful. I don't know why this isn't standard. I think it's a brilliant idea. The function ID part is probably just programmatic, but like when it was introduced, what when it changed, I'd like to be able to log that stuff. So yeah. that is like, like as an aside of like, when is data sims new? I have no idea. Um, but it's, uh, it seems new. Like I, I, I'm sure I could find it in the change log, right? Like it's like, yeah, no, this is, that's awesome. I, I am trying to find. So data sim oh, is new as works. of our lane 1.0. Um, which translates to data dot food. Yeah. Uh, okay. so data sims are cool. Um, but yeah, I will, I'll leave this here as a note so that you can remember to look at it so that we can look at it later, but because I also will want to investigate how this is done. 
Um, but yeah, so names pattern um, exists, data sims exist. Broadly speaking, I'm surprised. This is kind of a like ergonomics thing, but like there's no actual point. Like they don't discuss using n sims here, which is surprising to me because generally speaking, there is no reason to use either of these things <laughs> ever in my mind. Um, sims are always created with it. Like the difference between sim and nsim is always like inheriting from an argument, right? So there's no actual reason to use sims or data sim or whatever, um, because generally speaking, you use metaprogramming to work with other people's arguments. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> It's bad that it's not mentioned. I actually don't remember. I did not read the previous chapter. I'm really sorry. Uh, previous uh, guide. But yeah. this is completely useless in the sense that fill to var as a character string and then use sim and data sim, it's completely useless. You'd never do that. You would just write data dollar sign sill, right? Like there's yeah. no reason to do that. Um, Unless you were like translating, I guess if you had like a hundred variables stored in a CSV and then yeah. you were translating your own code, that might be the only time. Or I guess something um, like that. Yeah. This might be actually more useful for like John, your new thing with um, parsing YAML files for an API, yep. right? Like if you're converting a list, like a hard coded list that's controlled in your environment, that might be more useful. Um, okay, so I, sh I shouldn't say that it's never useful because, um, quoting Hadley, you should never say something is dumb because a little while later you'll find that it's not that dumb. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite like Stack Overflow <laughs> snippets I've ever seen. Um, but I should say that it's not useful for the average Arlang person. The person who's writing R using Arlang is working with making functions that are better for tidyverse people. Um, so in that case, you'd be wanting nsim almost all the time. Uh, I actually don't know if it's mentioned here. Uh, does data sims exist in a nsims perspective? I don't think so. I don't, okay, I don't think why, so. But why wouldn't, if you're going to introduce nsims, would you not want? Um. Huh? Why is there no n n data sim or yeah. data n sim? Does that not make sense? I'm gonna add that to my list of questions for Hadley. Yeah. Like we discovered this thing. Does does that not exist? Right? Yeah. Is there a I, I'm that trying to uh, exist? I feel like they didn't need that convert. Con, um, convenience is why it probably doesn't exist. Right. You can imagine that this is like, how many edge cases could we possibly come up with? Um, right. And I guess like in the same thing where here, it's like, you would never, I've already lost the thing. Um, you could symbolize stuff locally, huh. right? Like all the stuff that's locally, but not the actual um, yeah. thing. Like data sims is useful in this case because you could have your data and then they could pass in their vars. Like you could use this to subset like custom internal data packages, for example. I can see that being useful where it's like. That's the entirety of data sim, by the way. <laughs> so I love it so much. That's hilarious. Um, yeah. Because you could just end sim this, right? <sighs> It's a little like what if you just replace there? What do you replace sim with n sim? I don't think that would work cleanly. because it's call. Yeah, um, I'd have to maybe. Um, I don't know, but I always think of those as like n sims. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's strange. So, but okay, so they use this expression my group by vars to like do that. So maybe it already works. Yeah. No, oh, actually, uh, does this work? FYI, because I'm starting to run into it. I am scraping something right now. And uh, I think my computer is about to crap out. 
So if I disappear, that's why. It's because I managed to fill my RAM. <laughs> why are you scraping directly into RAM? Because uh, I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you could use, are you using, I'm assuming you're using ATPR2, right? This is just our best. Oh, just our best. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yes. um, just, yeah. So uh, I've had a couple of moments where my computer started to lag, and I think that was why. And I'm seeing that it looks like I have a pretty big bug in it, but I don't want to stop it because I want to let it tell me the bug. Because uh, uh, My getting... internet has also been poor, so I, yeah. oh, okay. it could just be me. All um, right. Anyway, so. Yeah, going on. Um, okay, so yeah, so this is an, this is not the only names pattern, but I think this is inherently how like all of et cetera works um or like under the hood as well it's just translating uh to nsim and then from there like evaluating that string inside of a data frame for example um so you know you can work with sims i think experts are similar no sorry sims are always characters like they create objects um expressions can do math so that's right. the difference here um but like the sims are more useful if you are using a pattern that's specifically with names. Um, cool, questions so far? I think that's like straightforward so far. Um, bridge patterns are strange. Like this exp this example is always, okay, but why would you use, why would you convert mutate behavior to selection behavior? Um, again, uh, I think that's what they describe here, um, which is to say uh, you can use a variant of the transmute bridge pattern uh, and then instantly pivot longer. So you can, it's like being able to, so this particular function accepts a, accepts new columns that would allow you to like do math during this, um, during the columns so like it i think what this is saying is that the pivot long currently only lets you choose columns to pivot by name um and doesn't let you mutate in those steps so by implementing this um you could have a pivot longer that accepted expressions for example and then evaluated those expressions so um did the math that's implied here uh created this temporary data frame and then pivoted the temporary data frame with calls all of names um so it means that instead of pivot longer only accepting sil and am it means you can transform am inside of this pivot longer function um which is cool but also for practical usage, just pass it to mutate first, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is more like, if you really wanted to do two things, I think this is like a violation of some function clean code or, mm -hmm. is it solid that I'm thinking of or something like that? It's like single responsibility or whatever. This does like two things, right? It evaluates the expression, transforms the data frame, and then pivots that. Um, so, you know, would let you have multiple columns listed here that get transformed that are that can be transformed in one step. Questions about that? I think that's all they have here. So basically, you can use it to do things that I would not personally want people to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's a thing. Um. And then transformation patterns, it's bad that I didn't have time to like go through the notes here carefully um, beyond, it's useful for doing things to the call, the labels or both, um, that's all I said. Um, but, <laughs> you know, if we talk through what's actually happening here, um, you know, you can use these to transform inputs um, manually. Uh, so in this case, you know, if we always apply a mean to the variables in question, we can transform the call, the, the expression here to evaluate this in a certain syntax, but then we'll wrap it in mean to create like this new expression and do the mean on these things. Um, so inject the expanded expression 
data dplyr summarize mean equals dot dot var. And then, you know, we would be automatically creating the mean of this column, but it would have a little more flexibility, I think is what they did here, because you could then multiply sill inside of this function, if you will. Um, so it lets you specify those things. Of course, you know, in the tan is allergic to mm. metaprogramming sense, you could just write this as um, a cross list of variables, or in this case, just still, you know, have an anonymous function that multiplied dot x by 100 and then did the mean of that, right? Like, there's no reason you would need to write it like this specifically. Um, my allergy continues. Uh, but in theory, this function would let you do things like that. Um, and I think this is more useful in like some contexts where you have like names or like, like especially a specific naming pattern for like internal, uh, like company packages or specific data set. Um, or, you know, making sure that there's no name collisions with what currently exists. So having some silent like auto renaming, um, right. I think is generally useful. Um, so that's things I would implement with a names pattern like this is like capture this, make sure they're named. If they're not named, change the names in a certain way. Um, and then you know, map each diffuse expression. So maybe we're transforming mean is kind of a weird one, but what if it's like some specific formula? There's like a quarterback passer rating that transforms with this specific formula and there's no like default mean expression, for example. So you could like, you know, get the passer rating for all these players and then, you know, loop over something. Um, <laughs> but again, would not write it like this. I think going back to philosoph philosophically speaking, I'd write a function that would that calculated this mean and then you know use a cross to loop over it kind of thing rather than transforming this into expressions that take that 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 include this thing, right? Because this essentially translates the code. Uh, the translates your code or creates a code translation. So it's harder to to know when things go wrong, um, in my opinion. But yeah, so this is this lets you do things that you would not be able to do with names patterns directly. Well, in one clean step, I should say. <laughs> um, so yeah, so transformations, um, there are cool things, but limited by your imagination and your ability to prepare for all of the user edge cases that could possibly attack you in this way. <laughs> <laughs> attack. Uh, it, it does feel like an attack sometimes. I know like sometimes it's like you want to support as many tidy natural behaviors as possible, but tidy behavior is kind of unnatural. So let's move on. Um, there are, it's possible to use base stuff with that, i.e. like avoid using Arlang. Um, Arlang does a lot more to safeguard things and it's generally not that heavy a package to introduce um for the reward so in general you right. could use base r to do things because r does naturally implement non-standard evaluation in many places um if you're familiar with the transform function not that anyone is because mutates generally better um or <laughs> the subset function uh it all they all have this natural kind of nse format and then you can use with and get to do something very similar. Um, so data mask and get a data mask is basically a with function, um, but also lets you evaluate. Actually, I think with will also let you evaluate beyond this as well. But generally, if you use with and get, you'll be able to get the variable that's in this in this from with, and then use it inside of a mean. Um, but there are some. There are cases where it gets kind of tricky in this case, um, you know, name collisions, for instance, here. So symbol injection, if you're able to use inject here, you can basically port over the bang bang plus sim work that works here. Um, so you could theoretically get 
empty, get into empty cars um, by forcing this into a symbol and then evaluating it. This is actually new to me. I'm going to try to note that down. Is that like <laughs> inject actually exists? Yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing to add there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> inject. We so we talked about inject uh, last week, and okay. that was like, oh yeah, that makes things like I, it gets. That's another one that um, I'm pretty yeah, sure was added um, newishly. Yeah. I mean. You know, it was probably like two years or ago or something, but it's since I did all my heavy work with metaprogramming. Yeah, um, that sounds right. <laughs> it's hard to find. Inject parentheses. It's not probably how you should search for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been here since the beginning. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Things we did not know existed, but clearly need to be either advertised more or they're not advertised for a reason. Uh, right. I think it's yeah. the latter. Like this is more like just tidy eval empty guards. You wouldn't. You would need yeah. inject to have it operate in the with context. But if you're gonna go f as far as to have Arlang available to inject, you may they as have, well use tidy eval, and then just it, it's, pass that. It's like cases where um, a function isn't, um, you know, isn't tidy compatible. You can just wrap the call in inject instead of doing a fancy like call um or eval you just inject makes things kind of just work so if you go through the previous um article injecting with so injecting hmm, yeah um this one inject parentheses yep. yeah it's that one it's towards the end yeah injecting with bang bang um but so, yeah so if you want to use uh bang 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 that's the main thing is if you wanted to be able to use bang 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 in uh, a function that doesn't support it that's where okay. inject becomes really useful i think that was i think that's exactly the one case is if you have something where oh man if i could just use bang 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 this would be easy it's like okay then you want to inject right which would also guard against like bad uses of bang, unexpected uses of bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Because you would always know that that's supported by the inject part. Right. Okay. I'm with that. <laughs> I would never use it, but I'm with, I, I that, that, that is not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I evaluate very much on the, this is stupid or not stupid level. I'm really sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, and then parse and eval, uh, aka Bobby Tables land, is <laughs> not great. Um, but it is basically you build a code, build code in a string, and then evaluate it in some mask or some environment. This is um, when they say mask, they mean like environment where you with converts the data frame into an environment to evaluate the code in. Um, Name collisions, adversarial code. Hey, it's Bobby Tables. <laughs> um, you know, and then you, you, if you do like, you know, RMRF or something from from this code, you know, some shiny, some shiny whiz will look at this. Oh, like you know, you have a shiny app and you take in a character string. Um, you could theoretically override that and then have it like run bad things. Um, could be a coin mining routine yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah so public shiny app inter internet users this is this is stupid as it says um and then you know even syntactically speaking if there are non you know are syntactically valid names like this you wouldn't necessarily know to put it in the backticks to make that work, right? You'd have to have the user put backticks in, or you would have to put backticks in to make this work this, the way it's expected to. Right. Um, so Sim does this trick for the most part. Um, and then uh, you can use experts or whatever and then do very similar things. Um, and then you can inject code here to avoid the name collision issues from before.
again, cool. this is getting into things that I can imagine using in my current project. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> things that are like, if you're building a package that like is meant to work across many APIs uh, or yeah. parse text into code, this is kind of in the territory that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, Probably not the eval parse stuff because I imagine you'll be using R lang, and so you can use you know right, yeah, actual <laughs> end quote or transformation patterns or what have you. And um, I'm not even certain that I'll even need to need yeah. need any of this, um, mm -hmm. but I might. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Any questions? Um, I know this to the level that I, I can talk about it. Or like understand what I'm reading, but I don't know this in the I would use this sense. And reading these past few things have not really convinced me that I <laughs> do need X. I um, so I think it is what is useful about these is like being able to recognize all the patterns and whatnot, so that when you are writing something and you go, oh. Oh, this is what that's for, you know. Then you have that, <laughs> and you can you can do that step. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, any other things that we want to talk about? We have twenty <laughs> minutes to discuss our Lang adjacent thing. Um. We could call stop here, probably, if we're going to yeah. uh, take this. Um, we could dig into the GTR studio, like the documentation. Like, I really want to know how this is done. <laughs> I, I got distracted for a little bit there trying to go through and find that. And so far, no luck. As far as I can tell, he just did it manually. And does it? Yeah. I mean, I um, understand it's. But I feel like there has to be a script somewhere that I'm not finding that did that. Maybe not, but. Feels like it should I be some section. See, like if he handed these, I think it should just be standard. Like this should be like at introduced and then automatically do X. Right. But exactly. Even if your um, hand, even if your hand adding these, I think it's worth it. Like it's like, hang on, I need to go back and like make sure that this exists so that you can like check the dogs, right? Um, yeah. At, at some point recently, I think is it Arrow that does this, but um, I want to hit stop because I think we're fully off the rails now. <laughs>